right, welcome back. So the next session is on Perf Tools in BPF by Nam Jung. Take it away. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Nam Jung. I'm on working on the Perf Tools. And it's great to be here and talk about the topics we have in the Perf Tools. So there are several uses in Perf Tools uh, using the BPF. And we use BPF skeletons to save the BPF programs and use libbpf to load them. And I don't think I have time to to explain those the perp command using BPFs in detail. But let me just briefly talk about the issues. And perp stat BPF counter is to share our perp events if multiple users want to measure the same set of perp events. And perp trace is a basically the same version of S trace system system called tracing, but it's much more efficient. And we use BPF to get the the argument of system calls and and print them in a in a hu human readable way. And in perp recode, we have two use cases. One is op CPU, which shows the own CPU and op CPU profiles at the same time. And filter is much like the packet filter, and we need to drop some samples. And perp lock contention is another cool feature, and it's it's to track lock contentions in the, in the kernel. And and this is one of the topic of this talk. And perp after its latency is to show a histogram of function latency of a single function. In this case, we only support uh, kernel functions right now. And perp k work is, is to track all the global kernel uh, work activities, like uh, hardware IRQ, software IRQ, and work queues. So let's get into the filter uh, issue. So as I said, perp recode use event filter. Right now, only trace point events supports filter, but I want to have it in the regular perp events too. So we are using BPF program to decide whether it drops the sample or not. And it's based on the return value of the program. And BPF program reads sample data and make the decision. So we use BPF skeleton to compile the program once. And we use a BPF map to express the filter expressions. So here's an example. So in this case, user want to profile their program with this cycles event for the user space only. And they want to filter on some uh, specific tasks only. This is a silly example, but you can see the idea. So this uh, filter expression is is saved in this struct format. And it has operation and which sample flag it needs and what's the value we want. And this is saved in a, a BPF map, array map. And then BPF program runs like this. It runs the loop and get the uh, filter expression from the BPF map. And based on the operation type, it compares the value. It, this is a simplified version, but the logic is like this. So what we need is just to look up the filter expressions from a BPF map and make the decision. Okay. Then there's a problem because of the root privilege requirement. So perp events basically requires perp cap perp mon to, event, to, to open the perp event. Or it can be relaxed with the, the syscontrol perp event paranoid. That means if you already have perp event, you have the privilege to work on this perp event. But now you cannot uh, attach your BPF program because you don't have privilege for the BPF. Right? But in this case, normal users just want to profile their own programs. And they, they don't need any kernel information. Okay? They only need to access the sample data to make the decision. 
So we would like to have unprivileged BPF program for this use case. So I talked to KP and Andre about this. And I'm not sure BPF token is a good solution for this problem. And it looks like creating a, a separate namespace and create a token and passing it is like an overkill for this simple use case. And we might pin the program by root on a BPF FS and give some permission to read normal users to read that program. That might work, but as I said, the program can be shared, but, but it needs to work on uh, BPF map data separately. So each invocation should work on a separate BPF maps. I'm not sure it's, it's supported. We maybe need a way to copy this program and map, use map uh, separately. Or we can add a new unprivileged prototype just allow some very limited operations. So we can load the program and create map and then that program only allow to look up the map and, and access the sample data using this k -funks. Or any other solutions? I think anything unprivileged is no go because we still have hardware speculation bugs for foreseeable future. So, like, even if you try to restrict it logically to this, like, load, create, just look up, because there is like speculation attacks, like, none of those the restrictions will help, right? So, it's just like VPF is just too big of the attack surface, even if you, let's say, don't allow any help just whatsoever. Just loading programs is already uh, an exposure. So unprivileged for next 10 years is probably no go. So any other way I can work with this, this situation? Anything but unprivileged. <laughs> But you already need cap perfmon, right? I mean, it's not like that. You, you already need cap perfmon, so already need what? You already need like the the cap, like the capability for a perfmon, right? Uh, what you mentioned based earlier. Based on the the perf event paranoid setting, we might not need perf perfmon capability. So if it sets to number two or one. User, user space program can profile their program, can open perp event without the capability. Okay. So, next issue is a stack trace. And I have three issues, but I'm happy to see Andre talked about the third issue in the previous talk, so I can skip that one. But we have still two different issues. One is skipping some unrelated code stacks. So right now, perp lock contention is track the, the lock contentions, and, and right now I'm collecting the stack trace to see in which place this contention comes from. Right. So I collect uh, max eight depth stack traces, but as you can see, four of them are, are not related, not interested in, in this use case. And I know the stack uh, helper function can pass the, the depth we want to skip during the stack trace. But sometimes it's hard to how to know how many stack entries I need to skip. Uh, in this case, the blue uh, block, first three uh, stack entries, I think it came from the very uh, low level of trace point or BPF handling functions. And if there's a way to skip those uh, from the collection, I, I can pass the number three, just skip 
but but it's not it it depends on the kernel configuration or compiler options so it may be three or four or five I don't know and the red block the mutex lock function is a, a, a lock function and we have a way to figure out whether this function is came from the one of the lock functions and maybe we can have a same way in the in the BPI program to skip those functions easily so this is the x86 linker script as you can see there are some text sections like head section text scat text and lock text and this is uh, defined like this so you can collect all scheduler related functions in a single section and add uh, uh, symbols at the beginning and the end of that section then you can easily compare if this IP address is, is belong to it belongs to this section or not maybe you can have the same trick with the BPF uh, text or just related to the stack trace function we can skip those functions when we collect uh, uh, stack trace of course I can do that after in the user space after collection but it'd be nice if we can do in, in, in when we collect the stack trace in the code time then BPF get stack ID and other stack helpers like flags as I mentioned flags can accept some numbers to how many entries to skip then maybe we can have a new flag just skip the first BPF related functions in the first place or in the same way some scat functions and lock functions then I can get the interesting cost text in this case do equal weight at first and to, to see the further cost text or I can reduce the size of the buffer to, to collect the interesting cost text and the other issue is to get the stack trace from the another task we now have three BPF helpers for the stack collection BPF get stack and get stack ID and get task stack but I need BPF get stack get task stack ID because uh, stack ID is very convenient to, to deal with in the BPF program so use cases uh, pop lock contention program the pop lock contention just measure the wait time of the the contention, the contender. So if you see the lock contention, it will hit the trace point, the lock contention begin, and contention end. And you can measure how much time it, it waits for the, the lock contention. But sometimes we want to see the, the holder or owner of the lock, what it's doing. So for mutex, it can uh, access the mutex owner from the uh, lock data structure and we can get the task structure of the of the mutex owner then we can get the stack trace of the owner in case uh, it's not running so we need to why this lock content is this so so much and what the owner is doing at the moment and it, it if it's very useful if we have uh, this kind of BPF get task stack ID helper. But I don't think you want to add more helpers at this moment. It can be a, a kfunk or other way. Then if, if we have uh, this kind of uh, uh, helping functions, it'd be great. Why can't you use just BPF get task stack and put it into the hash map if you need ID? Yeah, that can be. Yeah, yeah, that can be done. But as you said, it's it's more uh, convenient to deal with just start it with stack ID, and we might need to. Yeah, we might implement all the logic in the BPF program, but we might 
need to to consider the the deduplication case and other. Well, oh. you, you can do your own deduplication. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah, that yeah, I, I don't think it's not. It's not possible. It, it can be it can be done in the BPA program, but if you provide this kind of helper in pair with other step functions, that'd be more convenient. And uh, sorry, I missed like the very beginning. Like, do you care about kernel stack traces or user space stack traces? Uh, for now, kernel only, but maybe user stacks too. Well, I just wanted to point out that. Uh, Parf doesn't support capturing stack trace for another mm -hmm, task, mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. for current. So we would need to solve that first, if you need. For now, current stack is, is OK. Sorry, we were like, but this is getting the stack trace from a different task than the currently running one? Yeah, I, I, I need to, to get stack trace from other tasks. Yeah, so we were like, because we were discussing this, that, that we want this. Mm -hmm. We should have just walked in. So yes, definitely have a big need for this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. As I said, use cases to to get stack trace of uh, lock holder. In this case, we hit the uh, uh, trace point from the waiter lock waiters, but we want to get the stack trace point of lock owners. Okay, so um, <coughs> uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, race conditions to that. Yeah, and so so I would like to limit it when it the owner task is not running. And what happens if the task starts to run? So uh, I, I admit that it's racy. I mean, one thing you do is you can grab the uh, run queue lock. That would prevent this task from switching. So if you, if it would, question is, can you do it if we're not grabbing anything? So if you were to find out the owner of or what the task is, um, it might be a little bit kind of expensive. But I guess, you know, you just don't really care if it's too expensive. To, it's not super expensive. So. Yeah. so You'd have to, okay, say you find the task, you have the task struck of the owner, then you would get which CPU it's on, grab the run queue clock of that CPU, check to see if it's on the CPU. If it's not, you don't have to worry about it going on the CPU because you have the lock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you could look at, do the full check of the stack uh, without race, and then release the RQ lock and do that. But then that has to be part, you probably have to put that in the scheduler code because the, mm -hmm. the run queue locks are not exposed outside the scheduler code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and, and what if if it's running on CPU? What do you do? Wait, if it's running on the same CPU? Not on the same one, just running. What oh, if it's do? running, you can't get. Well, does it, if it's running, then there's no stack trace whatsoever. Well, there is. Like you, you no, it's um, uh, no, no. It if it's running, it, you will get just garbage. It, it's there's no because the stack. If you try to look at it, it's constantly modifying its stack traces. It's jumping through functions. It's going through there. You're going to get garbage. We're talking about kernel or user space? Kernel. OK. But if it's running, you don't care. If it's running, you don't care as much. Because if it's, it should be releasing lock. No, lock should not be held for too long. It's mostly the oh, if you're, for, if for you're, lock contention, yes. But yes. in general, you do want still No, I, I, you. And we already have it. Like, it's racy, yeah. But like we have BPF get task stack. But for, uh, for a running task for the yeah. kernel? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, we just but, use power of call chain, whatever. On, on the step, but then it just so you just get garbage. Potentially, well, I mean, you'll get you'll probably you know obviously it's bouncing around. The bottom part of the stack will probably be garbage, and the upper lane probably will be kind of content. Yeah, and and then what happens if the task free, gets free is freed, or is released and freed? And um, I mean, how do you prevent races where I have no idea how Perf does it? I just know that we call into Perf call chain and it. More or, or less works. So since uh, perf call, if it's perf, it's written by Peter Zilser, who's the scheduler maintainer. So he probably put in some locking or something himself. So. Yeah. Yeah, getting uh, stack trace from the running task is inherently lazy. So in this use case, I don't care about the running task. I only cares if it's slipping. But we still, it'd be great we have BPF get stack task stack ID. So this is the topic of the previous talk. I can skip this. I'm, I'm not proposing a new solution. I'm, I'm just raising the issue. And I'm happy to see you're working on it, Andre. The next topic is symbolizing locks. It's also related to the per, uh, lock contention. And we need to symbolize the lock address. The, basically, the trace point only provides the lock address and type of the lock. 
and we need symbols. And global locks are okay. We can uh, translate that address to symbol using KL sims. But others, we have problems. Like if we are seeing some contention on inode log or VMA some locks, then we don't have any symbols. So can BTF help? I guess we can help some. Yeah, we already use some BTF information to symbolize, kind of symbolize this. For long queue logs, we have per CPU variables in the BPF, BTF, and we can iterate each CPU to get the address of run queue, and we calculate the offset of the lock data structure in the run queue, and we compare if this address is matched to, to this run queue lock, then we can mark it as a run queue lock. A similar way, we can uh, tag MM logs using the current tasks uh, task struct, and we get the MM struct, and calculate the offset of the MM log in the MM struct, and compare with the, this uh, the log address we get from the trace point. But we also check the type of the log. So we, if we see the read write sample, it's highly likely to be contention in the MM log, then we can compare the log from the, the, the MM struct in the current tasks. Maybe BPF, BPF, BPF iterators can help to get more uh, global-ish uh, data structures and get the address of the uh, log uh, symbols, but I don't think it will uh, solve the problem completely. So I'm now thinking about the data type profiling approach to mark this kind of uh, non-global logs. So it... Sorry, question. When you say symbolize lock, what do you mean? Uh, like, if, if lock is just a field in some task struct or something yeah, else, yeah, like yeah. What, what does it mean to symbolize? You just want to know that it's part of task struct and this is the field? Yes, yeah. So, yeah, in this, in this example, I'd like to see if this log is, came from the MM struct or this is from inode struct. And, and inode. This kind of information can be used as a symbol for non-global logs. I, I think LockDap already used this information as a symbol for them. Sorry, who's using that? Lock depth, lock dependence checker, but but you're targeting probably like production kernels, not just yes, yes. Okay. We can then use lock depth. So, so my approach is to get a cause tag for each uh, lock contentions, like I do in the previous slide, and find the first color of the lock function, and then we can. We, we know where in this function calls the log function, and the first argument of the log function should have the address of the, the, the log is contending. Then we can figure out which type it came from using BTF. So right now, BTF only provides type information for the function argument and per CP global variables, and I think it will work in many cases, but if you can support global variables in BTF, it will cover more logs. And even further, if we can local it can support local variables, it will do the whole uh, data type profiling only using the BTF. Why but, don't you just use Dwarf for this? Yeah, I can use Dwarf, but Dwarf sometimes not available in the production system, right? Well, but like your proposal, basically, let's grow BTF to almost the point where like the dwarf is with, with extra information. Yeah. And at that yeah, point, like this kind of BTF might not be available because people will say it's too big. Yeah, yeah. If it, if the dwarf information is available, I can use that to 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 profile type information. But if it's available in the BTF, it's much more convenient, right? So if you are interested in supporting uh, local variables to support data type profiling, we at least need uh, type information and uh, the location expression 
express which instruction range this variable is live and which location it's actually saved, like in which register or which stack slot, and things like that. So that's it for now. Any questions? Uh, just a <coughs> suggestion. Uh, I, it seems to me that you're trying to solve this problem of uh, identifying like which log is actually like contained in in this generic way, and because of it, like you're facing this uh, challenges and solving it completely generically is <coughs> not going to be easy. It looks like there is no actually like good solution without uh, adding a bunch of runtime overhead, log dip style. So the suggestion is to uh, target your solution towards the specific logs that you know will be like typical, uh, well, <laughs> uh, suspects, like a map log, uh, a map sema, the this mutex, like run q log, etc. So like in the kernel, because this is all like targeting the kernel, like in the kernel, the number of logs that are typical, like a C group log, so the total number of logs that will be this uh, suspects, I would say like a handful, there will be like a couple dozen, so and target the solution towards like them. Then you can like see, like especially the hardest ones would be this uh, that the logs that are inside the per task, because they will, they're all dynamic, right? So they will be like somewhere from current. So potentially you can uh, make like the way that logdeb does, like microsify the spin log, pass additional information through the spin log, and when it's log they're already contending, like inside the Q spin log a mutex, like start like saving like current, etc. And so yeah, the, the current status is that, uh, the, like a map, it's, there are several uh, logs that are already identified. If you do uh, use per flock contention, you're going to see some of those logs, the most important ones. There was discussion with Vlasimil Babka about asking for, in the sample type, for perf, uh, to get the slab cache, where this memory, the, the data, mem data memory is. So that you could approximate the, 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 the type from looking at the, the table of uh, slab caches. So I, I mean, but, but it was just an initial discussion. I, I will continue trying to, to see if this is something uh, that we can do or, or if it's because Perf uses, works on NMI, this can be costly. I don't know, it was something that uh, was discussed briefly a while yeah, was so but but that's this what you're describing I think it will solve this per task log right yeah. because you will know like which slab that is part of the task struct this is a big slab so you kind of know uh, yeah but again this is like not this is customizing the solution to like specific logs which which makes sense yeah because like going back like can you go back like the previous slide? Like global variables in BTF, I think we want it like regardless. But local variables is probably not feasible, especially if you don't need all of them. So yeah. it, the solution cannot be let's add all possible things like blood, uh, BTF, just as big as dwarf is everything local because you don't need all of them. You need only like a handful of things that can be like contending. Yeah. And uh, again, back on the slide, like the way that logdeb does, just like capturing this ampersand i node like error i log stuff, it's kind of interesting. But you probably want more, right? You want like specific i node, not just that is this like string the way it was in the C code, but the actual like i node that's being contained, and not just like any i node i log is being contained, right? I, I didn't hear you well. I'm saying that like if you do what logdeb does, just capturing like the string, the way you like showing it on a slide, that's what logdeb does. It just captures the string the way it's written in C. It's nice for debugging, but you need the actual address. 
like when logdep and logdep prints this uh, <coughs> logdep report, it shows the address of the log, and from there you can like do them some further debugging. So same thing for you on there. So this going back to inode, but so just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this 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 information is just from the VTF type information, and. Well, I have no idea about how to support the specialized, in the case, the, the most contended logs, but I'd like to have a generic way to support all, all the... The first way to monitor it, the first uh, thing is to, to identify which log is, is actually causing more contentions. We have some user suspect, but if something changes, then new logs will uh, uh, came up, then we need to find out which log it is. Then we need uh, some general general way to figure out the, the information. What Arnaldo suggested, like looking at the uh, slab information, then associating like between the pointer through the slab, which slab it is, then figuring out whether it's, let's say, a slab of inodes or slab of task structs, and from there, using BTF, the existing BTF that you don't need to extend, you'll just know the, from the BTF, you know the offset of a map lock and I lock, and you know that as a slab, you just like know that this is this guy. But mm. it's all like will be like post processed by perf and user space. But yeah. initial, but you need to capture like a slab, etc., like early on. So yeah, I will, I will take a look what I can do. Thanks. There's a comment from, from in, in the Zoom. Eduard, do you want to speak up or? Yep, hello, it's Edward. Uh, sorry, just what Alexei told, uh, like it, it, it sounds like a partial solution to just have line number information uh, like, but track for specific function calls. It will not give an address of a log, but it will give at least a location in the C code. And an address could be like uh, infer from the stack trace if it's necessary, like recorded there somehow. I don't, I don't get the question. What? Can you say it so, again? So, like, you have some set of function calls, like mutex log, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you want to understand, like, what kind of local is held. Yeah. And uh, if we are talking about limiting the debugging information, like BTF or, like, if we have a line number information recorded not for the whole kernel, but only for the logs to the specific functions. Mm -hmm. So line number information can help you spot where this log is came from, much like the cause text, but it doesn't give you the symbol or, or type of the log. So you don't know. You may know when you when you take a look into the in the the source code, but it it's hard to do it in the programming way. Okay, we need to move on with the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you.